Hey, Christina. Hey, Christina. Hey, Donna. Good afternoon. Good Hello there. Hi, Christina. Hi, how are you? Hello. Nice to see you. You too. So, you know what I was thinking, Claude, after I was, um, hey, there's Raymond. Um, like the Michael Lewis, you know where that link is? Yeah. Okay, good. You want to share it? Yeah. You want to share it? You can share. How's everything? Do every anybody? How is everybody doing? Very good. In the listings? Yes. I'm okay. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, we can hear you, Raymond. Yeah, hi. Hey. So okay. Fun. Go ahead. Start. No, you go ahead, Donna. I was going to say that we were going to talk about listings, but <laughs> you go ahead. <laughs> Definitely, that's exactly what the topic is today. It's listings. And Glad and I uh, talked a little bit earlier today, and we were going to talk about the pre listing preparation that you need to do, um, the listing, the actual listing, where you can find it as a new agent and customize it to your business. And then a little bit about the post listing activities that you need um, to do to, to close and actually win the listing, right? And so a little bit that we that Glad and I am yep. Glad, please step in. Um, we talked about um, after you make that appointment, you know, what's next, right? And so Glad, as an agent, your experience, what have you done after you get that listing appointment? What do I get after I get? What do, what do, do I do after I get the listing appointment? Listing appointment, yeah. What's your next steps for you? It really depends. Like I already have my, my listing consultation ready. So what I do is I always um, change the name and the address for, for that I personalized it. So like I have already some, but I personalized. If I have a picture of, of the house, I will put a picture on my presentation from for the house so the people see that it's actually about their house. I put the address. And I also put their name on that. So that's kind of the things. Um, and again, it really depends how I get the, 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 the listing appointment because usually most of the time I send a thank you note. Like if I'm meeting them this afternoon, there is no way for me to send a thank you note for you know for accepting me to meeting with them. But like if I'm meeting them next day or in the next two days, I will send them a thank you note that I'm looking forward to meet them. There's different, different steps, but I don't know exactly how, where you're referring to Donna. Well, that's, ex I mean, that's kind of, I was touching upon. So you get the listing appointment. Um, I like to um, let them know that they're going to see a meeting proposal from me. And so right now it's Zoom. So with a Zoom link, if that's what they need, or if we're going to meet somewhere and social distance, I, and I put all the details into that meeting proposal so that it's on their calendar. It's on my calendar, no excuses, right? And then I agree with Clara. I sent them a handwritten note. Thank you for the appointment. I look forward to meeting you and discussing um, your real estate goals. People still love, right. I know I do. I love receiving mail that's not a bill, right? So, so that's always a good thing to do and to stay top of mind. And um, and then, and it's not only about the listing presentation, it's becoming familiar with that neighborhood, where are the parks, where is the shopping centers, um, where is freeway access, what um, big corporations, um, is it by Facebook, LinkedIn, is it downtown, is it by Adobe, is it by Cisco? Having all that information prior to sitting down in front of those um, potential sellers, I think it's huge because I can't tell you, they, they always ask me questions like, oh yeah, and there was that house on the corner, which happened to me yesterday. I was in Palo Alto. Oh, you know that house, and I just happened to know that that house on a, the corner of Webster and California has been on the market for over a hundred days and it's on the market for over nine. Why do you think it hasn't sold? You know, it's like Webster's a busy street. I just happened to, you know, Webster is a really busy street at a $9 million price point. I don't know, would you want to be, you know, having traffic flying by you all the time? And so we have that conversation. And so it's, um, 
it's really important to know the neighborhood and what kind of sales has happened close to that home within probably the last 30 days at the most, you know, cause it's um, because yep. you might just be walking in for the first time, but they've been thinking about selling for a while. And so they've been paying attention to the real estate activity in their area. And they're most likely going to ask you, what did the neighbor sell for or the guy in the corner or, or like yesterday, why hasn't that house sold? You know, that one down the street, I just, happen to know it so it was, and I thank God I knew it right and um and knowing companies right Clara they're always you know where do you think you're going to find a buyer well you know I know if it's by Apple my girlfriend is Tim Cook's admin she'll post it for me internally at Apple I already have that relationship and I can talk about it so to have those kind of um ideas at top of mind because those are the things that kind of ask you that you can't really talk to in a presentation. Glada, what kind of questions Definitely. do you get? Yeah, those questions are always important. And also, yeah, now it's, it's that pre-work that is important. You have to know the area. And because as Donna said, they you could have that first meeting with them, but they've been thinking about selling. They've been watching the neighborhood. They know. And before when we have the open houses, they will go to the open houses to for their, their neighbors. They, they will know how it's presented, you know, how many days it's been on the market. So I was I always do a, that as well. And if I have a chance, like if I'm meeting tomorrow, I will go today and see the houses that are around that are selling, that are competition for my clients. So I actually know them. I mean, if it is in a couple of hours, because we had a conversation in the morning and then we have to meet in the afternoon, at least I will go to the MLS and check everything. As Donna said, I, I, I actually go a little bit farther than 30 days just because, you know, they will start saying, oh, you know, last November, there was a house that took like one of the days, then you know, oh yeah, that one, you know, and then you start talking. It's also information for you because when they, when they want to set expectations for the price to put in the, the listing price, some of them will go to go very high. So then you can say, hey, remember this house was in the market for a hundred, you know, for a, this amount of time. Well, they started at this point and they ended up selling at this, at this point. So you can set expectations. So information is really important. So I would suggest because right now we don't have open houses, but you can still preview some of the houses, especially those that are close to, to your listing and, the, and those that are actually competition to them. Because that way you know the, you know the area. And as Donna said, it is very important to know the, you know, everything around, even the schools in this area, the schools are very important. Like if you next said, oh yeah, the school is this, the school is that, or anything about it. Like if, if that is, as she said, a shopping center, where are the choir uh, areas, uh, streets, things like that. It's very important to do. Yeah, I agree with that. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And so, and for me, um, uh, creating uh, the listing presentation and customizing it based on, on you and your business, I like to drop it off the night before and let them know I'm going to drop it off the night before, give them a day to look at it. So it's not, I, I just don't like going. And now, you know, it's really, um, did you have the opportunity to review my listening presentation? Do you have any questions? And then you can go, okay, so let's walk through your house. And you kind of start having that conversation and, you know, be familiar with the home and, um, and asking them, oh, I saw that you redid your kitchen. How long ago did you redo it? What do you like about this room? And, and start having those conversations as you're walking through the house, assuming that you have that opportunity okay. that night. And it's not a Zoom call, Definitely. you know? <laughs> All those other, you know, if it's not a Zoom, if you actually get to go to their house. And then, and um, so the, I drop it off the night before in a pretty, like, shiny green envelope because green means money to me. So that just makes me happy. And I drop it off and I give them a text where I call them and say, hey, I dropped off the presentation. It's on your porch. You know, to please take a moment to review and you can prep your questions for me for tomorrow. Um, confirmed and then uh, so we can meet tomorrow at, six o'clock at, you know, as a reminder that the appointment is still happening. 
And then, you know, when you go, assuming that you're going to their home, um, I like to go a little bit early because I, you know, I'm, I get a little anxious sometimes and just get in the right mindset or listen to that song that gets you like all pumped up and ready to get that listing and make sure you're never late ever, ever, ever should be there a few minutes early, you know, um, little things like if you're going to park in front of the house, that your, that your car's clean. They don't look out the window like, God, you know, what happened to that guy? Did he go four wheel driving yesterday before he came over? It's all those little things as you um, leaves that first impression if you don't know them, even if you know them, if you don't know. Them. If you do know them, you still yeah. gotta treat them like you don't know them because it's not a friendship at that point, it's a business transaction. And so it's still important to do that. And even if they are your friends, right? You have to treat them as your clients. Mm -hmm. uh, if, even if they are your friends, you have to go there very professional and, 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 and do your work. Do your work before going and, and again, don't be late. I also hear, hear this, which I don't do. I don't, I don't get there minutes before. Like I get to the place, but I don't knock the door one or two minutes before because a lot of them are putting things together, especially if they have children that I, you know, sometimes five minutes is a lot of time for, for when you're cleaning the house, right? When you're trying to get together to get everything ready. So I try to be exactly on time. Like, I, agree. I will... You know, I will get out of the car one minute before, so it takes me a minute to walk to the door, knock, and I will always be on time. Always. No, yes, no one minute before, no one minute after, just on time. So what Donna was, was talking about is about the, the pre-listing package. That's what she gives one day before you get to meet your client or two days or whatever it is. Like if you are meeting them next Monday, you can always go and deliver this tonight or tomorrow so they can have the the, the package up front and that's a pre-listing package i do it one day i do i purposely do it one day before i want it to be top of mind before. when they walk in when i walk in i want it to be top of mind and i also include a a, a listing agreement completed except for the price all they have to do is sign and we're done yeah so do do you put over there the the comps as well donna Comps I hold on to, to talk as talking points right. when we go in. That's what I was going to say. So that pre-listing package is something that you have to put over there, which is your resume, uh, your, you know, your unique selling proposition and things like that. But everything about marketing and everything about uh, your, your comps, you, you don't do that until you meet them. Cause that, cause that, that's your kind of your, your, um, what you're going to talk about this is you talking about that but everything else like the values of the company uh i also put over there things like uh how to price your house right how is you know you what what is worth like your money your time uh what why why you should work with a realtor things like that you can put on your pre-listing package but like the comps and the the marketing, the, the, the strategies that you're going to do, everything that you're going to do to sell your, their house, I will put everything over there, right? Once so again, that's up to I, your business. Honestly, that's, yeah. that's up to your business. That, that, that's up to you. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. And the reason I, well, that's what I, that's what I was thought when I started. And the reason is because if they get everything from you, like your marketing, everything, everything, they can say, okay, thank you. I don't need your help anymore. I can do it myself. Because you have given me all the information already. And you don't want to do that. At least I don't do that. You know, every everybody works different, but at least I don't do that. So I I, I save that to to get it with me. And and then I can talk to them directly. And then I can keep it. Yes, I can they can keep it because they are they're gonna keep that information. But it's way different the way you explain it, so they can have it. But the way you explain it is just makes the difference. Any questions so, so far? So Feel free to butt in if you have questions. We're just kind of talking back and forth. I have a question. Hi everyone. Um, so, so you're supposed to give them a, a listing package like a day before you you, you said. I do. Donna does the day before. But then you, you can give them to like any time beforehand though, right? Like a week ahead or like a, but it's, 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 it's entirely to you. But the, my, that's my preference. That's okay, my preference. So, so it's more, more of a preface thing, but you do have to give them the listing package 
is it a, is it a requirement? Do, do you have to give it to them uh, before? It's no. your business. Okay. It's your business. Yeah, it could, you could walk in, and that's something that you could sit down to and have it as a as a as your talking points as you're going through. If that helps you, right? You can you know you can go through the presentation whether it's printed or as a as a PowerPoint on on a on a tablet on the on the kitchen table, right? It's it's based on on you, your client, and how you think you could present yourself the best. Okay. And then, uh, what, what what are some some things that that you always kind of include in your um, presentation package, uh, list list of presentation? There's a there's a couple. Of, we're going to show you a couple of them that you can see. We're going to talk about the process, and then we were going to go through. A, Michael Lewis is a link to KW that I think Galata, you have it. I do. You want? Me? Yes. Uh, kind of. But I just want to make sure that we are not confusing you guys. So this is the pre-listing package and it's only with your information. And I mean, it's, it's, it's just the way Donna does it, like she delivers one day, I will deliver if, you know, a few days before because it, it really depends on the client. There are some clients that are pretty busy. You know, what Donna does is really good as well because she says, I, I like to be on top of mind, uh, but I do deliver days before but even if you deliver it days before they don't want to review it they won't review it because i do get this kind of like, oh no i didn't have the time to review even though i've oh. delivered or yeah. like uh, or like so, Raymond, like uh, you know, but, but millennials it's just something it's just something for them gotcha okay thank you and so i tell raymond too you know maybe as a millennial maybe they don't like yeah. printed pieces maybe your powerpoint I mean, I'm sorry, your listening presentation, you're going to deliver electronically, you know, and maybe that's what you do because millennials, maybe your audience doesn't like printed pieces and it just makes more sense. That that works too. Gotcha. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Do you, and also it's always very important to know your client. Like if, if they are a high D or a high C, like guys are, oh, my internet. can you guys hear me? Yeah, you're breaking up a little bit. Yeah, I think you're right. You cannot hear me. Yeah, that's what it says. Sorry, let me know if you can hear me. I can hear you. You're just breaking yeah. up a little bit. Donna, I think I'm going to do it. I want to make you, Donna, I'm going to make you um, a host in case this thing kicks me out. Okay, and if you, in the chat, can you put the link to the Michael Lewis? Because I found there's the link in uh, command for that yes. one. Yes. Michael Lewis is a separate one. It's a different resource. Yes. Yes, I can share the link right now. Perfect. Uh, but I, you might be need to be need to. Okay, it's there. Perfect. Yeah. So what you were saying, Claudia, about really understanding who you're talking to right if they're a high d or a high D. you want to finish that thought right yes do the high d is like we like things very like just go to the point i'm a high d <laughs> that's me. and i like to do things you know like yes yeah, just tell me what you need you just do you know tell me what you need tell me what you want me to do it, it's just my of course i don't do this with my clients but that's just the way i am and there's some clients that they need explanation and background and numbers and everything. So you you have to get to know your clients. An engineer, well, like yeah. if your client's an engineer, they want to know absolutely every detail of everything. So you should have a very complete listing presentation. And maybe that's the guy that I would give it two days in advance because they will read everything that I put in there and they will have questions. So knowing your audience. The statistics, yeah. Is it okay to ask them what's the their preference? Like how would they uh, like, uh, do they like to have it a day before? Do they have, do, do they like to have it a week ago or or should we bring it with us? Is, is that appropriate to ask? I have never asked. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. think that's a bad thing to do, but I have never asked. So you try to learn, you know, to, to, to get to know them and then I will decide. In my case, to be honest, every single uh, or most of the listings that I have uh, had are very fast. Like they call me this morning, we have it in the afternoon, or they call me this afternoon, we have it tomorrow. So to me, most of the time, I don't have the time to deliver that package. 
Mm. Uh, but I do send, you know, depending on the client, there are some that I will, I know them and I know that they see every single detail. So I will at least mail them, e email them. Then I would say, okay, I'll send you some information to them. And they appreciate that because they know that they, I know them and they know that they are going to review every single word that I will put in the package. So they will review it. And then the next day they will have, you know, questions for me. That will, especially because you want to be in control of your time. So you don't want to spend with them for hours. You know what I mean? So you want to go there, you want to do it in, a, in, a, in an hour or less and move forward. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. And, and so, um, and I have one listing where the person liked having the, the packets and like at KW in our office now, we have the hard covers, not the plastic, whatever. You can purchase it for what, $7? <clears throat> and she was like, oh, you have a hard cover. Oh, nobody else did. It was a big deal that I gave it to her and it wasn't a hard cover and that I gave it to her the day before. So it's just really getting to know that client and, and, uh, and understanding if you have competition too, are you the only person she's interviewing or is she interviewing others, right? That's important too. How do you know that? Do you ask? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, but I'm with Glada where most of my company is here. So I know them. Yeah, and, and, and they usually are gonna say, you know, I'm interviewing agents. And you can ask, oh really, how many are you interviewing? You know, and then they will tell you. They would say, you know, I'm interviewing a certain amount of agents, mm -hmm. so you know you have your company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At that point, do you offer extra things uh, that can uh, lean her decision towards you? Let's say staging that you're gonna be paying for this or doing that or, uh, you know, things that will um, um, make her decision to, to choose you rather than others uh, easier? Mm, I don't change anything on my presentation. I always do. I always treat my clients the same way I will treat everybody. So in terms of staging, it really depends on, on your business, uh, the way you do your business. I always page with for, for staging to my, to my clients. That's something that I always do since I start. So, there's, I, so I don't change anything on that, but I, I will always ask them. And I don't know guys, well, maybe, I don't know, Elsie, if you were here when we had ball, uh, Raymond, I don't think so, but, like we have some scripts that I will suggest for you also to take a look. Uh, one of them, one I always ask, especially when they have different clients, I always say if there is anything, anything the other the other agents will do that I forget to mention. So I don't say that I don't do. I said that I forget to that I just forgot to mention. Is mm -hmm. there anything that the other clients, that the other agents are going to do for you that I for, forget to mention? I so see. then they will tell me, yes, they say they will do this. this, this. Oh, yeah. And, the, and then at that point, you can know, okay, yes, we do it. And here's the way I do it. You know, mm -hmm. most mm -hmm. of the time when I ask this question, they have never told me anything I'm like, no, you are actually doing more than the other agents. You know, so it really depends on your value proposition and what you offer. Mm -hmm. and, and, me, and you're going to go in, you should go in. in. Like you are the right agent and have that mindset right? so that you you don't have to, you shouldn't be giving your, you know, your, um, you shouldn't be giving money away. Right. So if exactly. that's you, this is what you offer, you know, that's what you offer. And I'm going to kick ass and I'm the right realtor for you. Right. And so, just win with that mindset. As a new agent, yeah. what are the normal things to offer that you, that as an agent, you're going to be covering, paying for? Like the pictures, the virtual video, the staging, the signs, the flyers. What exactly uh, agents pay for um, that you should um, definitely do? It really for it really depends on you, LC, because I, as a new agent, I started paying for everything. So mm -hmm. that was my that that was my thing. Like I didn't want to have the, you know, to have them pay for this. Uh, but I will always pay for 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 professional photography because I always say professional, and I always explain I don't bring my cam 
and take pictures, I have a professional person going and doing it. So I always do, I always pay for that. I always pay for a video. I always pay for a staging. Mm -hmm. That's my business, but I also charge 3%. You know what I mean? So I charge 3% for my, for my, for, for my listing side. So, but I, this is always that I have always done. It's something that it's my risk. It's something that I will take since I started. So it really depends on what you guys want to do. I know agents that have been in the business more years than me and they don't pay for for staging but it's okay it's always the way and the reason i pay for it i have my reasons they have the reasons i pay for staging because i like to show a house as a top dollar it's a right. beautiful house that's my presentation next time i go to different listings so to me it's an investment because if i show a house with with the client's furniture and everything and very bad that's my presentation even though the clients didn't want to pay for for the for the staging that's my presentation that's my listing and that's the way i'm showing it so that's why i pay because it's an investment to me i i don't see it like i'm paying to them it's an investment right so when i show this is the way this house was before i helped them selling and then i show them so that way is leverage for you to get to different to, to the next listing. So it really mm -hmm. depends on you. Uh, hi, Clara, I had a question. So uh, do you only stage if they're not living in the home? Have you ever staged with them living in the home? Always, even if they are living there, I always stage. I have different stages for, for that. So most of them are gonna go and look at the furniture and uh, they can use some of, of, of the furniture to make it look nicer. Because we also want them to feel comfortable with, well, while they are living in, in their house. I see. So, so you work with, you work with, with your clients saying, hey, can I replace your couch? Would that, would that be okay with you? Um, just to make it look yeah. better. So it's kind of like whatever they're comfortable with, right? I explain in the presentation, I explain about the staging. And I also explain that it's like living in a museum. I always say that, you know, I like to set expectations first because I don't want them to get mad at me because they are not able to sit in the couch. So I always explain, and I, I always explain that the reason we're doing this is because we want top dollar. Right. And if they want top dollar for the house, they have to show their house as a top dollar house. So showing probably, you know, a couch that is, I, I won't say this, I always leave that word to my stagers. They have that conversation with them. So I said, I will bring an expert and because the clients will always ask me, what do we need to take out? And then I said, I will bring an expert. I'm not an expert in a staging, even though I know which, you know, because you get to know, okay, this is not going to work. But I always leave them, they leave that word to the stagers because they are the professionals. Thank you. Sure. And with COVID now, you try to encourage people to move out anyways, if there's any way they can move out. Cause you know, and I just use the whole, I wanna protect you from, you know, from COVID and there's gonna be people and they are signing papers saying that they don't have COVID and they haven't been exposed to COVID, but you know, I wanna protect you and it'd be better if you moved out into family, yep. into whatever, while we sell your home. And, and, yes. and they can help us uh, always sell faster and for more money because they're staged nicely. People have easy and people have easy access to them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. But again, it's it's really is about the business you want to have. You know, it it to me that wasn't a decision that I made at first, and it was something that is something that I, my mentor at the time showed me how to do, and I started doing it the first years, and then I I didn't do it that way. It's like he will pay also for the staging, but it's a credit he will get back to them. Like the, the clients pay for it while, while the house is in the market. And once it closes, he will give them back that money mm. as a credit. So he doesn't put his money at risk. Uh, I did that at first, but then I found out a lot of uh, objections. So I just went and paid myself. I just pay myself. I don't ask. It's going to gonna sell, especially except, in this market. Yes. I was going to say, except for the ones that I know they are in the fence and they're looking for something that is unrealistic, then I would say, yes, you pay for, for, for the staging and then I will give it back to you. 
because I know that they will probably change their mind and, and they won't sell. That's the, that's the only way. It's, again, you have to know your client. You have to ask the right questions. I, I can tell you personally that the one client, because um, she, I forgot that fibromyalgia, whatever it's called, where uh, the, the nerve, yeah. she, she was always in a lot of pain. And so she needed her couches to be comfortable. She couldn't live in a museum. And I'm telling you, that was the hardest house I've ever had to sell because it wasn't staged. It was in her ugly brown oversized couch. And I just felt people would walk in and that's all they could stare at versus looking at the house and thinking how they can bring their stuff in and live there themselves. That was the hardest house to sell and it should have been. And it was because it wasn't staged because of her um, illness. And it did not sell for top dollar, yeah. it should have as well. So totally, I mean, I don't know how I could have moved her out because she wasn't, she had nowhere to go. She needed that money to go to her new place. Um, so unfortunately, you know, I couldn't. I did some, not all, but the biggest pieces was the couch in the living, the, uh, the living room and her bedroom were the worst ones because of her illness and those were the ugly ones. And, and you can see that in pictures. You can, you know, it's one of those that you'll never show again because I don't want to show that as, but I did sell it, <laughs> but it was a hard one. Yeah, so you stay no, that's you, great. Yeah, so you, the listing presentation, going back to the listing, um, you tell them like, like Lara's saying, you're going to go through all of your um, marketing deliverables, including the staging, professional picture, pictures, videos, the four post sign out in the front, flyers included, 3%. Um, and then what's next for you, Flora, after you do that with your listing presentations? After, I, I'm sorry, you, I, I lose you guys. For so a, you go through the whole listing presentation. How do you close? Uh, well, for them signing the, the, the listing, right? I mean, at that point, I will always ask, do you have any questions? Do you have any question why you wouldn't you wouldn't sign the 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 listing tonight? You know, and I keep asking things while the listing presentation. Like, are we? You know, I always, as Donna said, I always assume it's gonna be done. We yeah. are gonna sell your house. I'm gonna represent you. I'm gonna do this. You know, it's always that way. I don't say if you choose me. Like if no, it's like we are gonna work together. Like this is happening tonight. And uh, so if, if they have questions, I will always ask to have questions to, you know, for them to answer, um, to ask their questions. And they always go for the, for, the, for the signature. I will say, well, you know, we just need to fill out the paperwork and we are good to go. So that's basically the way I do it. Yes, but I just they don't sign all the time. But yeah, so for the people that have, um they're interviewing, let's say you're not the last person and they'll say, yeah, but I have to, um, I got three more interviews. I'll sign here and I'll cancel those appointments for you. I'll call those agents, yeah. you know? And there's a lot of scripts around that. You know, you don't have to be that forward, but you can be as well, right? Um, yeah. And uh, there's no reason, there's absolutely no reason you, you wouldn't go with me, you know? And go exactly. in with that mindset, right? And so- yeah. and, uh, but what if they say, you know, uh, that yes, now it looks like there is no reason to go with somebody else, but I didn't listen to anybody else. I would like to have that opportunity just to compare. Lara? Well, to be honest with you, if I go by the, by the book with, with the scripts and everything, I would say, well, there's nothing to compare. I'm the best to do this work. Just let's sign this and no worries. I will call them and I will explain this situation to them. But again, I will always go to the way the, the clients are. There are some clients that it's okay to do that because you know they're going to end up working with you. But there are some clients that they don't like to be pushed. Right. Like, and I always get this because my husband is that way. If my husband wants to work with somebody and he decides to work with somebody, but he feels like he has been pushed, he won't work with them. He will say, no. You know, I was going to, but because she tr she tried to make me sign tonight, I'm just not gonna work with them. Yeah, he's an engineer, so he, I, I know. Like how that too. But if they, but but then you could also look at it too. If if uh, if you they, if they say like, oh my god, you're being too pushy, da da da, right? Well, isn't that a good thing? Don't you want a realtor like that on your side? 
being pushy I know. on terms and conditions and price with the people coming in with offers? Isn't that the kind of person you want yeah. representing you? Definitely. Yeah. And I'm with you, Jonah. Turn like, that into they a say that Turn that yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. Again, that, that same argument can go there too. Like if you if yeah. you're that pushy and you uh, you know turned my lights off because you're pushing me to to a corner that I don't I'm not comfortable at, then the customer also might be this have the same reaction to your pushiness in a way, right? Well, when, when we talk, we're talking to the listing agent. We're not talking to the end buyer, that person that's going to fall in your in love with your house because yeah, but the, the listing, but, but the house, the the person who owns the house, he is looking at the picture as a whole, you know, when the buyer is going to come and he's going to find somebody who's pushing them too hard, they might make them, you know. But I'm not, but talking, no, Elsie, I'm not talking to the buyer. I'm not talking yeah, to the buyer. Elsie, but, but Donna is right. I mean, you want the best agent. You want somebody yeah. that is going to go, you know, and represent you it's in, in a way that he's not gonna let anybody you know it's like it's you like want a very good and strong agent to you that is true but what i'm saying is that i like to observe people for some clients you have to that will work mm -hmm. yes you have to you have to observe your client like you know if i say this hey don't you want a strong agent representing you right yeah that is me you know so they know if i'm I could say, imagine if I'm uh, fighting this hard for this situation, how I'm gonna fight for you out there for your money, right? But I know some clients that won't work. Mm -hmm. So like you have to observe your client. So for those, I will you know, just hold back and say, perfect. Here's one thing that I will do with those sometimes is, okay, let's do this. You are not sure tonight and you want to interview with them tomorrow. So why don't you sign the contract tonight? If you decide after talking to them that you don't want to work with me, you just put it in the, in the trash. But it's already signed. It's a mindset. They already signed it. Mm -hmm. And if they no, say no, 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 no you, you take it with you and you call me and you yes. say you don't want to work with me and I'll tear it up. We won't have anything to do. Yes. Don't leave it with them. You take yeah. it with you. But uh, it's, it is a so mindset that they some of them will allow that. I tried to do, just one of them didn't want me to do it. She said, okay, I'll do that, but I'm holding on that contract. And I <laughs> said, okay. I said, okay. you know, I said, okay, because I mean, if, if he's going to sign it, it's okay. Next next day he calls me and he says, hey, Clara, is ready. You want to pick it up tonight? tonight? I said, yes. So it was a, you know, I, you already know. So one of the things that I also do, and I don't know, that's just the way I like to work with. And I always tell this to my clients, I don't like to work with people that don't want to work with me. Like I would, I really, because I went through this once, I don't explain that to the clients, but this is for you. When the client wasn't really happy, no matter what I would do, like if I could work for free for him or for her, and he will never be happy. So it's on the stress that I don't want to go through that anymore. So I always tell this client, you know, I don't like, I don't want to work with a person that doesn't want to work with me. So if you don't want to work with me, you just have to tell me tomorrow and, and, and I will, as Donna said, put that in the trash, no problem. And Did that's you? a promise that I always do to my, to my clients, buyers or, list or, 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 or sellers. And that's a good, it, the strategy around that too is when you first start the presentation is, you know, Thank you for the opportunity. It's great to see if, if we want to work with each other. It's not just you yep. working for them. They're working for you too. And, and, and everybody should want to get to a point in their career that you can say no to somebody. Because, there's, because I have worked exactly. with people that I don't want to work with. And I'm telling you, a lot of lessons on that. And so, if so, and sometimes they'll go, work with each other. What do you mean? Well, you know. I, I want to make sure that you're a fit with me and I'm a fit for you. It goes both ways, right? Yeah. So, you know, at the end, I'll let you know if I want to work with you. And then, you know, and then it's like, what? It's like, it turns into, <laughs> it kind of, you know, goes, you know, because everybody wants to be liked, right? And so it's an interesting kind of tactic too, but it's really just saying that in the beginning, it's, it's really an interview both ways, right? In um, reality, you are on the same team. You're both trying to sell their house Mm -hmm. at the best price possible so you're both win if things happen 
the way you're planning it as as a strong coach kind of leading the uh, leading the that transaction to the most successful one that can possibly be yeah and if there you know the be- I, you know yeah. I just this hasn't happened to me yet but I've always because of the bad experience I've had in the past is like it'll be that one person that you don't want to work with and you you see it coming right you know it and at the end you go you know what? I don't think this is a good fit but I have a couple of agents that I think would be a great fit for you let me send their names over to you <laughs> and you choose the ones you don't like and you send to them <laughs> <laughs> right you know and just but you know it's true I, everyone should get to that point where you don't have to work with somebody you don't want to yeah yeah and so that's uh, and then i'm um, also too through the listing president i'm sure Clara does this as well um it's something called mirroring so if you're familiar with that term um no like once again know your client if he's going to be if you have a client that's in t-shirts and and a pair of jeans and a pair of nikes guess what i'm going to wear t-shirt jeans and a nike t- tennis shoe if they're in a suit, I'm in a suit. If they're in a dress, I'm in a dress. So know and understand your client and mirror them. And so, you know, there's been stories, you know, people like uh, they didn't have their shoes on. They put their feet on the couch. They put their, you know, put their feet under them and you know, had that kind of conversation. And so it's really mirroring their, their tone. Um, yeah, I like to talk fast, but if I'm talking to somebody who talks slow, I talk slow, right? and try to mirror them in, in tonality, speed, body language, so that they learn to like you, trust you, want to work with you, right? Yeah, or very calm. Mm-hmm. Like there are some clients that they will like to talk this way. So you have to talk this way. Yeah. I don't do the dress thing that Don is saying. I always dress, this, you know, but I do mirror them. Like if they have their like hand this. this way, I will put my hand this way. You oh know, like they have an Apple Watch. Them. I'm going to show that I have an Apple Watch. You know what I mean? <laughs> I have an Apple Watch too. Yeah, yeah like I got mine yes. right here. It'll be on. So have, yes, like and if I they also want to find something in common with them. Right oh, the hair. <laughs> no, but you know, if yeah, they're more casual, you know, if they're real casual, I don't want to be super dressed up, right? Then I feel weird. I know. And then, then they'll say, yeah. something like, oh, I don't know. I should yeah. be dressed yeah. up, right? No. So, so Mary yeah, is that, really important. That I have never changed, but that, that I have I never have. changed. But the other thing, yes, the mirror, they mirror them. If they're, as, as Zona say, if they talk very fast, I try to talk very fast. If they go slow, I want to go slow. If they, you know, things like they do, like if they do this, I will do this as well, you know, because it's a way they feel comfortable talking to you. Yeah, and I, you I get used to that. You can because even with my client, with my friends, now they're my clients, but my friends, I will do the same thing. You know, I will try to, you know, because you practice with them. Mm. Good. Okay. There so, go. any more questions you guys have? Maybe oh, we got a few minutes. You want to show the, um, the Michael Lewis, or do you want me to show it? Or let me try and show it to myself. Yeah, because this is where you can download, this is your starting point. And so we have two resources where you can get the, the listing presentation. There's Michael Lewis, and there's also, uh, you can get it from um, Command, through Command. Or no, KW Connect, I think it was. Okay, can you oh, see my, my, my account? So do you, are you guys familiar with Michael Lewis? Do you know that you have an account there? No. Nope, don't know no. about that. There you go, I'm glad okay. we said something. Yes. So just go. I'm gonna I'm gonna put the link there. So just go and to Michael Lewis marketing3.com. Okay, I can share right now, but I will share. Oh, here it is. Chat. So then you log in there. So usually your account, your KW account, uh, will work there. And if not, just ask Lauren or Jay and they will let you know. So basically this is where you are gonna find out once, once you log in and there's a lot of stuff there that you can see, a lot of stuff for, 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 for postcards, for everything, a lot of things. But you have to go to the free stuff. So you just click there. 
And then you will find here the consultation. You will see that there is buyer's consultation and then there is um, listing presentation. So depending on, on what you want, I use the, it's not there, oh, high-end listing presentation. And they have it in Spanish oh, now. I like that. And that's what I'm Spanish. looking at. <laughs> Finally. They didn't have it before. They didn't have it in Spanish before. No, they didn't. Oh, no, it's no. Okay, so I need, I have to download it. So you have to click there, it won't download. And basically what they have is a, you will see now. Have to wait. But it's really great. You can customize. It. And so as you grow your business, the generic information that never has to be customized, I would suggest have two or three just sitting there so that you're not scrambling. I like, like Glada says, you get, you know, you get a call that afternoon, you have to do a listing presentation. Guess what? Grab it and go, you know, and then all you have to do with the part that's customized that needs to be customized, um, you customize it, print it, and, and put it together and either deliver it, bring it with you, whatever it takes. But I mean, there's been a couple of times where I've had to scramble and go into the office and print, and I've learned my lesson to just have a couple of them sitting there. Right. Okay. So this one is different. It's opening right now. Give me one second. So they up, uh, yeah, they changed it a little bit. It's, it's different now. Yeah. I think they change it now because it's this is from 2020. Mine is from, I don't know. 2018, I think was the last one. Which one? 21? The one before that was 2018. So they've had this one. Well, probably mine is from 20, 2015. So it's, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but of course, I, I changed the, the information there, right? Because it's now my information. So uh, can you guys see the, the presentation? Yes. The PowerPoint, okay. So see, you already have this that you can change for your logo or the KW. Uh, this one, it's different from what I had, they had before, but obviously you can change this. I would suggest to put, this is what I was saying that you can change here the picture and you can put the picture of, of the listing because people always like to be treated different. So if they see, oh my gosh, they put a, the, the photo of my house there, right? There is another a small here one. I mean, you can put two. So you basically change this, like see the client's name. This is what I was saying that I change. I always put here, like if I'm presenting to Elsa, I will put Elsie, Elsie Saba, and I will put over here also the, the address, right? So she knows I did this for her. And then this is something that you can have a standard all the time, like your description and all that. So you just have to go through this. I don't know, this is probably something that they just put here. Do you have to use all of them? You can delete just pages. Use the ones that are, this is only 12 pages. The one that I had before were like 30 or I don't know. Something but, crazy. Um, yeah, I think, you know, of course yeah. I don't use the 40 pages, but I, this is probably better because it's less. See, it's talking about the price and the strategy. So you have already this that you can always put together in your policing, the marketing is strategy, and it talks about the staging, photography, print. It, I mean, if you are going to offer that, just leave it there the way it is. If you are not going to offer that, then you need to change it. And if you are offering more, you can always add another uh, slide. See, again, marketing strategy, it talks about open houses, custom property website. I do custom property website as well. And in mine, it has over here, www.firststreet.com. I always put there also so they know that I already have that link. Um, see, it talks about different things, right? So you can, this, we wanted to show you this, Donna and I wanted to show you this so you know that it, it is there and you just have to change it, whether, you know, with your information, there's a lot of information already here, the standard one that talks about the digital marketing and everything. 
but there are some other things like your resume, your values, everything that you can add. And he talks about Keller Williams, right? Why, why should they work with Keller Williams? And then it finishes. So I think it's better now because it's more simple than before. But I will add to this other things like pricing and why, you know, why they should work with a realtor, things like that. that I think it, it helps, but it really depends on you. And there's one on command as well. Did you want to show that, Clara? Yes. I will need help with that, Donna. Do you know how to get there to the one in command? Mm -hmm. See, I have it open actually. You want to make me? Oh, yeah. You are a co host now. So you wanna, if you wanna do it, you can do it. Okay. I'm gonna share, you can share. And so th this is the different templates. Can you see my screen? Mm, no. no. Let's share again. Share my screen. How about now? Yep. Yep. Okay. And so this is the listing presentations they have available in command. And uh, let me see. So we could just open. I think this one's a little bit longer than what you saw in Michael Lewis. I like the clean, the cleanness of the one for Michael Lewis. And so this is this one's pretty easy to um, to customize. It gives you some instructions here, and then it goes into the presentation. So picture of the house. Here's your picture. Contact. Change the logo. Who it's for. This one actually gives you a little <laughs> um, agenda. What you're going to review. Oh, that's good. They give you, you know, do you have a page for their property? So you can take a picture of the home, give the details of the home and talk about the house. Here's what's, you know, this is uh, what's happened in the area. We talked about CMAs and neighborhood information can be separate, can be included. You know, this is based on your business, right? Um, they talk about... Mm -hmm properties in the area that have sold. So it comes mm -hmm. you can include it in here. Um, and this is kind of like, it's kind of interesting the way they did it. So your, your needs come first. And these are like questions that you, you could talk to is what's the one thing that has to happen to make the dreamers scenario reality? How can I make that happen? What's the, what's important to you? If we could add just one more thing to make this process even better, what would it be? So these are conversational. I think it's weird that it's in the presentation, but it can work. And they talk about the process. So this is probably more for first time home buyers. They're always really anxious about what the, oh no, this is selling. I'm sorry, I'm thinking word buyers, but they talk about the process. Selling. So there's people yeah. like for me, I'm selling a house where they've lived there since 1955. They don't remember what the process is. So let's review the process, right? So knowing your audience once again. So you talk about the process if you, and you can easily add steps in here or remove steps based on what you want to communicate. They do have a page about talking about the app and having them download the app while you're there with them and you can demo it really quickly. And then you talk about the marketing and how you're going to market the home they have a slide talking about how everybody starts their search on the internet. I don't know if we need to say that anymore, but they still have it in there. Um, I think so. I think we first, have that. Yeah, so theirs is a lot longer. Um, strategic promotion, how we do the coming soon, just listed campaigns. We don't have an open house strategy. We have a virtual open house strategy, but we could talk about that. And it's in the details. I like this one. It's the, the yard sign. You're listing amplified. Do, I like it. So you know, it's really different from the other one. So once again, it's really based. And you, and you can look at both of them and pull and bring it in and customize it, right? You, if you've been, for the newbies, this yeah. probably is not a good slide for you because it talks about how many years of business. You could take numbers from the office if that helps. But um, 
you could talk about the team because we all sure. have a team in the office. You could include the team. You could include, if you have some numbers, you could talk about um, if you have any awards. And if you're working with a mentor, sorry, then I was gonna say, if you're working with a mentor, you can always you, talk to your mentor first, but you can always use their numbers too. Like we yeah. sell houses, like we do this together. That's what I did when I had my mentor. Like I would say, oh yes, we sell this many of houses a year. Yeah, definitely, because we do. Um, they talk about the, you know, the KW would win integrity clause awesome. and portfolio of excellence. This could be homes that you sold or that we sold, your, you, your mentor, the office, depends on how far out you want to go. Once again, portfolio, they have featured listings. They have different ways to lay it out. And then here's the um, testimonial page. They didn't have that in the other one. I was surprised. Testimonials are always yep. important. Yep. It is. Yep. And you know your promise to them. This is an important slide, I think, right now with COVID, right? We talk about virtual showing, socially distant tours, contactless transactions, right? And so we really mm -hmm. can, you know, do the listing through Zoom. We can do the virtual open houses. Um, they don't have to come into an office. That we send uh, at the end, we send a notary to their office for you know final to sign for final sign offs and things like that. So that's important to communicate. And the bottom line, and you could electronically add your signature there, which is a nice touch and then the close. So I think there's a lot of information in both that is great. And you could just combine it and then give it your look and feel. And play uh, with Donna, it and practice, it. practice, practice, practice. Hmm? Uh, can you show us how, how to get there at the uh, for command at the login? Oh, uh, the beginning, beginning? Yeah, the beginning, just for people like, like me who don't know where to go. Um, so you're going to go in your command. I forget. Uh, so it's down in uh, report. Template. Which, oh. Template. I'm almost there. Is it down, down mm -hmm. more? Yeah. Designs? Designs. Designs. And then you're going and to go templates. into, huh, why did I get there so easily before, huh? It's because I've copied some and brought them over here. I think. Keep going, right? Yeah, you are in the right way. Am you can probably right? put in search listing. If you put in on search listing, maybe you can get it there. Nope. Shoots. Well, this should be easier than this, right? <laughs> it was yeah. Oh my God. How did I find yeah. it right here? It's just right there, huh? Where did I put it up? Where, where is it? Now I, did I just... Um, did you close it? My, oh, templates. Here we go. But how did I get there? Uh, it's in it's under templates. Yeah. Huh. This is connect is not in connect. I thought it was in connect initially. It's in templates. You got it there. I got it there. I, I did. Let me go back how I got there. So if you maybe if you do the search on templates versus listing. I can send you the link. How's that? Put it in comment in the in the um, chat. And if you could copy it, it'd probably be easier, Raymond, than me trying to show you right now. Yeah, that's fine. I just want to know the general area. It was hard. No. I get, I get, because you start going back and forth a lot. It shows all your stuff right away, so you kind of have to dig for the new stuff again. But this is where you go for all the templated, and then there's the buyer. There's lots of stuff in here, yep. which I love. And they they started the luxury section here, and they're starting to populate that as well. So, and I like, I love the clean look of our luxury um, brand. So, 
I expect everybody on this call to be luxury agents real fast. So that definitely. That and also I would suggest for you guys to start working on that. Uh, oh. You know, start working on your listing presentation like today. That's yeah. Laura's is really short. I used hers as a, as a point of reference. I'm redoing mine right now to make it more, more clean than I had done. I kind of carried over my template from Rusty Pap at Intero. And so it was just time to just, it was just like a bunch of different things put together and it's just time to redo it. So I'm redoing mine right now. I focus yeah. my, my, my thing is marketing because I was in corporate marketing. So I spend a little bit more time talking about marketing because that's where I have, you know, some expertise. And so pick what your expertise mm -hmm. is to kind of um, I'll blow it up a little bit there. And I, you know, and talk it's very about important. It. it is huge. Yeah. And it's very, yes. When, when I talk to them, I always say, you might need, you might think that I'm talking as, as a marketer here. And it is because we have to market your house. Like I'm a niche and I'm an expert in that, but I, we have to market your house. Otherwise it's not gonna sell because that's what we need to do. I'm gonna share something with you guys that not everybody knows that I don't know if, do you guys know about Curbio? Hope this is the picture. Oh, yeah. So do you guys know about Curbio? Mm, not too familiar with that. Um, so Curbio is, um, let me see if I could, oh, there's a folder on them. They're a, same thing. That's not it. I'll find it for you guys. It's a, it's not um, okay, here we go. So Curbio, if there's uh, some renovations that need to be done on a home and they don't want to pay for it, this is a resource. They partnered with KW. You contact them. They do um, a virtual estimate. And then if they want to have the work done, Curbio finds a local contractor. They get the work done at whatever negotiation price and it comes out of escrow so the seller doesn't have to pay for it up front but you know everybody knows a new kitchen and new bathrooms bring in top dollar right so if they have the time and or and the money right they have enough equity in the home right to do this it's a nice it's a nice um add to your offering so it's something that you could put in your listing presentation you have access to curbio you know so if you want to do some renovations it won't be any money out of your pocket so just, I don't know if you knew about it, Clara. Yes. I, love Curbio. I, I never I, used them. I know them, but I have never used them. And what are they have called in Curbio? I'm sorry? What exactly the name is? Uh, can you spell it? C-U-R-B-I-O, Curbio. And so they pay for the renovations that you pay for the renovations at settlement, not up front. So this is something that could be a differentiator for you as well. So I try, I, I'm including that in my presentation as I, as I fix it up. But you know, it has yeah, to, I've never has used to, them. I, I know about that. I, I, I contacted them. them. I had them give a quote, but the person that I wanted it, that I thought was a great fix, you know, he was, he was basically in pre-foreclosure. We had to move fast. And so hindsight, it would have been a, a great way to go from like a 1.2 to like a 1.7, 1.8 house because it was in Rose Garden, right? But the kitchen was all original, the bathrooms were all original. Yep. So, okay. so that, know. so anybody has questions about listing presentations or, you know, there's pre-listing check, you know, I found this from, I'm always keeping anything I find, you know, it's like, did it, you could have a checklist prior, making sure that it's on the calendar, MLSs, property profile, title, run a title report, make sure they're the ones that can't sell the house. <laughs> because I, I told Raymond about this yesterday. I did get a buyer that was a junior. I'm just pretend his name is Raymond Tang. The Raymond Tang is junior, but he was signing as if he was Raymond Tang senior because se the senior never used the senior in his signature. And, um, you know, took the listing and everything was going and it actually sold and it was a like a duplex and we keep notifying the people in the duplex that they needed to move out they're ignoring us and I'm like why are they ignoring us they got to be out by us this certain day this was 
pre-COVID knock on the door. Yeah, we've been getting them, but we had been ignoring these notices because, you know, we own this property. What? You own this property. So title is very, very important. Run it. Make sure you're, you're if you don't know the person, make sure it's the right person. Net sheets. Do you take net sheets with you? Clara, do you take net sheets with you for the seller? Like for the closing costs and all that? Mm-hmm. Like Sometimes. what they can expect to walk. Yeah, it depends on the client. Sometimes I get titled to give me a couple of, of uh, net sheets so they know what they would be walking away with. Um, especially, yeah, especially if I have time. Like if I have time, I will bring that. So another thing that we didn't talk about is to bring the pro the property profile. Net sheet is, is going to say, um, of course, the comms, the school trade I will always bring with me. Um, I also do something like I look for all Santa Clara County houses that are for sale. I put there the, the name, the number, and then I go to, if it is in San Jose, I will put the ones in San Jose, and I, then I will go to the zip code. And if it's one, one, nine, one, uh, nine, five, one, two, five, I will put it is, you know, we only have this amount of houses. There's so many things that you can bring, but I think those are the ones that are important. Your property profile that you can get for any rep on title, uh, the, the, the schools, it's important to have with you as well, uh, the rates, which school is, is assigned to this house. Uh, also net sheets, as Donna said, if I have time, I will do the net sheet with my title company as well, which we is we'll ask them to do that. Uh, so they know what are gonna be their net money. And um, what, what else did I say? Oh, yes, the, the numbers for Santa Clara County and then for the city and then for the zip code. And if it is a building, let's say, if it is a building that it's, um, um, I don't know, a townhouse or a condo, I will put that over there. So for this condo, we only have two houses in the market. Like I do a lot of in communications here, so I will put in communications here, we only have this this much on, on the market because that way they know you know your numbers it's very important it, so helps, it doesn't even help with your pricing when we're talking about what you want to list at this is what's sold but you also want to know what's active and so this is your competition and you don't want to you know, and this is the days on market i mean right now nothing's on market but you know someday it will be and it's going to be really important of where you position yourself when you hit that market because you only yeah. have you, you only have one opportunity for a first impression right yeah. So, so yes, and if they said, it's already six ten. Yeah, I was gonna say last thing. Yeah, I know. Last thing that I was gonna say, if you have a chance to know your numbers, like if you if you know the MLS, there's five hundred houses for sale right now, and you know last year last year it was six hundred. Just mention that. You know we have less inventory this year than the same time. Uh, you know last year. So as Susanna said, that's a competition and that's the way we go. But yeah, it's 610. So thank you guys for joining us. Anybody have any questions? Are we good? MLS was a good thing. I mean, feel free. MLS is really good about helping people uh, run reports if you don't know how. And, you know, Claudia and I are available as well. But the MLS, you know, the more you dig into it, it there's a lot of great features that you can pull so that you know you sound smart when you go into these listing presentations and have the information you need anything else definitely okay. we are always here to help yeah and if you have a mentor please always you know ask them too because they we, we are pretty sure they know their numbers too <laughs> thank you guys that was great yeah thanks everyone thanks elsie thanks thank christina you. I if you're still there thanks Paula. that was a good that was good. Thank you. Bye, guys. It was a good one. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. Have a wonderful Bye. night. Bye. Bye.